Uh, welcome to today's special webinar uh, with uh, Copcom and PR leaders. Uh, we have uh, the topic called Decode Decoding the Business uh, Revival Post-COVID-19. And with us, we have uh, <clears throat> Sonia Huria, who is a senior VP and head corporate marketing, communication, and sustainability Y committee. She's going to log back in one minute. We have Mr. Samir Bajaj, uh, director, corporate communications and external affairs, South Asia Discovery. We have uh, Ms. Tuhina Pandey, communications lead uh, leader, India and South Asia, IBM. And we have Dr. Rajiv Chibber, vice president, external affairs policy, government relations and outreach, SMP. Welcome all of you to this uh, discussion today. As we know, uh, what has happened with COVID is uh, businesses have got uh, re-strategizing re is, uh, is a common term across businesses and everyone is looking at uh, realigning, reimagining their business space. So in this mix, it's the communicators who would finally get uh, in touch with stakeholders and tell them what the new strategy is strategy is about. So I want to begin uh, uh, with you, uh, uh, Mr. Bajaj. I want to ask you first that, what do you think, of what, how has the role of communicators uh, got redefined in this mix in a, in a pandemic time when every business is, is, is looking at realigning you know, itself? Thanks, Noel. Pleasure meeting you, Tohina. Uh, first of all, to everybody who is on, on the call, you know, this is, these are sensitive times, uh, probably the toughest period that humanity has seen, I would say, ever since World War II. And I just hope that everybody here, uh, your families are doing well. I think I you know, coming back to the topic, the scale and scope of this pandemic, as you said, is so big that businesses have actually no choice, you know, but to adapt to this norm. And uh, when businesses realign, communication, like you pointed out, has to lead the way in ensuring that it is seamless, right? Because one, there are external stakeholders to be taken care of. And I'm speaking very basic right now. And secondly, there is, there is a very important internal employee base, which is everybody working from home, scattered, right? So the cohesive, cohesiveness that you normally get or the small moments that you get when you're in office are missing. How do you, in this, you know, in this world, ensure that the entire team, one, is updated to understand what you're trying to say or what you stand for, right? And it has to happen on a day-to-day -day basis. So the role of communicators, therefore, you know, gains even more credence. And, you know, coming back just from a very micro niche discovery perspective, and I, I, I'll, I'll come back to the broader stuff, but, you know, discovery as a business was founded with the mission to educate audiences about the world around them, right? Now, we carry this ethos even today to millions of them. Now, if you look at it, this mission rings far truer today than it was, say, about four months ago. You know, given that the entire COVID situation has happened ultimately because of a human and animal conflict, right? Ultimately, ground zero, somebody ate a bat, is the theory, and I'll go by that theory. And that conflict is the bait, right? So in that sense, from a very discovery optics, uh, we haven't changed our narrative as such, right? Because we stand for what we were, it's just that we are that much more, you know, it's the way we are talking has changed. It's the way we engage that has changed. But the brand and its ethos and the narrative per se has remained the same. No. And I'll, I'll go just a bit deeper. Like, for example, we did a couple of documentaries on COVID and the game was or the aim was to ensure that audiences across the world understand the base or, or the reason behind COVID, understand and bust myths, right? This is what we did, did on Linear. But on our social platforms, we work with United Nations and dedicated our social assets to kill myths or to bust those, those myths which are prevalent. In fact, on Animal Planet, which is another brand, we actually did, did a documentary on how our pets impacted with Corona. And the subtle theme there was that, you know, there was a myth that pets lead to coronavirus. So what, what I'm trying to say is the messaging, 
during these time have to be empathetic, have to be solution oriented, and you need to speak from your heart to your consumer. And if you are doing that, because this is not a time to celebrate, if you are doing that, then you will build trust with your audiences. Right. And every step you take has to have that filter, has to have that optics. Right. You know, and uh, I, I think I, I think it's it's important that we add in more speakers. But I'll I'll give in more examples as we speak on. Right. Uh, Miss Huria, I want to come to you. Just uh, miss that intro uh, while I you were away. Um, so I was asking, uh, uh, what has happened with uh, this COVID? Uh, is that businesses are realigning, re-strategizing, and communicators have a very big role to play in yeah. building this new narrative. So I just want to understand from you how critical has the role of uh, communicators become in this new reimagined world that we call it? I think uh, the role has become even far more important than what it used to be. I think we always had a seat at the leadership table. But, uh, you know, now you're pretty much sitting at the right hand side of the table because everything, uh, communication is pretty much going to be at the heart of everything. And I feel that... Uh, the need of the art is really to have ingenuity uh, across the board when you are kind of, you know, using communication as a medium, whether it's for uh, internal or external, both the channels sort of need to be leveraged in that sense. And the wall between the traditional and new age communication needs to be completely shattered. Like there's nothing that's called new age or old age or traditional. It just needs to be, uh, you know, there for all across. And, uh, you know, all our stakeholders somehow expect to be constantly updated so the lockdown pretty much has taught us that you know through communication if we can take the digital first approach then we'll be able to sort of unlock this whole piece that is that we are all facing right now so in my view communication has obviously uh, you know the role has heightened and if one took the digital first approach i think we will be able to reach out to all our stakeholders in a manner that will help us unlock and what we are facing right now and some of the brands have actually been doing, uh, you know, the digital first approach. Some are getting to it, you know, so somewhere, are, some, some are in between. They're kind of discovering this medium that or, or this crisis that's staring at us right now. Uh, Ms. Pani, I want to come to you. How, how much do you agree with this? Of course, there is a lot of agreement. But what are your views about this new reimagined role for communication? Absolutely, because uh, let's look at it. Human civilization has been reimagined or redefined. So how is it that communicators' role will not uh, be re redefined in that sense? And in the lockdown, the one thing which went up or which was not locked down was communication. Part of it is also because of the technology. There was virtualization or the virtual technologies available. Maybe we were not leveraging them enough. But just the response and the agility of the human spirit uh, to get it going and to be on the move and to you know respond to the crisis has been phenomenal. The way I see it, Rohail, um, you know, it's both expansive and inclusive from a role perspective. Expansive, as Sami said, you know, and Sonia pointed out, that your scope has increased simply because don't remember a time where government was communicating as much, right? Uh, Sonia talked about the shattering of internal and uh, external communications. There is nothing, those boundaries are gone, right? And it's also people centricity. The interesting bit which defines uh, the time for me, and it's still a script being written, uh, is the uh, refocus on purpose, health, people, shared agenda uh, amongst the brands. So it's not just about you alone as a brand. But I think now there is a purpose where we're talking about safety first or the digital first, or how do we solve, find a solution uh, through technology? How do we help citizens, uh, you know, where brands are coming together and making a collaborative and a co-creative approach to problem solving? I think uh, this, in, and therefore I say it's both expansive and inclusive. People and society and nations uh, they're all having shared agenda today. So I think it's an opportunity to redefine how our roles are and it's still evolving. And, you know, uh, go along the way, be agile and keep your learning hats on. Dr. Chibber, your thoughts on this? Yeah, I completely agree with everyone. Couldn't agree more with uh, what Samir said. 
and uh, what Tohina also, you know, the purpose helped people kind of conodrome, which really set the tone to have now a new communications era really be launched in this particular you know, 2020. So we, we really uh, looked at it from a very different angle. Not only we as communicators, I think even the government stepped out of the way to look at it from a very different angle, where they had to not only contain something which was going out of their hands, but also had to uh, you know, retain certain set of uh, information, which was pretty important for the people to be palatable and people to understand basically. So that was something which was the first shift. And this led to the shift from the people, which is the government to the role which we now have. And that shift was something like an overnight shift. The moment we had a lockdown situation, the moment industries were closed, the moment there was something of a similar magnitude which happened where there was no businesses immediately available, that really changed the, the scenario. And that's where you know, the communications uh, teams were really raked up and told that, uh, look, the first objective was to find out a communication and then move into a crisis mode. Here we were directly moved into a crisis mode. So it, it really changed overnight where you were not uh, anymore thinking, you were directly put into that role of a communicator as a crisis communications expert. Right. And that, that's pretty much been defined very well because immediately what happened and post uh, and now if you see um, unlock two has already ha uh, unlock one has already happened and maybe unlock two is just around the corner and all the the role has really you know catapulted pretty fast every day there was something which was being uh, coming out from the government which was actually uh, trying to have a business impact, which was also trying to have a communications impact on to it. How do we now sustain ourselves? That that accelerated the th thinking process. So I think uh, just as a benchmark to start off the discussion, we really moved into a crisis mode rather than into a strategizing. Right. Uh, Mr. Surya, I want to come to you with this question. You spoke about digital first, you know, uh, which has happened during this. I want to also understand the overall impact of COVID on mediums, you know, communication mediums. Have they got rearranged? For example, we, in between, we didn't have print, we didn't have GSTs, you know, they were not doing content. What is the kind of impact on the rearrangement of mediums that has taken place accordingly? I think I kind of spoke about it that the rearrangement has happened. So for example, uh, there is this huge space which you know, as communicators, we do, uh, we use the offline medium, which is the on-ground medium to kind of, you know, use that medium to communicate about our products, our, uh, you know, shows. So that medium suddenly disappeared, right? Like you could not have a gathering, you could not have a press conference on ground to showcase and immerse uh, the media or our respective stakeholders into a product. So, you know, suddenly you were staring at it and you said, of course, you're going to launch shows. If you're not going to launch original shows, you're going to launch something else. How are you going to then still market your product, right? So given the fact that we had to quickly adapt, you know, this piece of adaptive creativity that came through because, you know, digital as a medium existed. And suddenly now you are hearing about these press conferences and pressers that are happening dime a dozen online and you know people have taken to it immediately whether it is communicators that have taken to it whether it is you know spokespeople within the organization whether it's the talent or whether it's a tech product people have just immersed into it so beautifully and seamlessly that it it doesn't seem like it's a problem anymore you know the fact that we always gave so much importance to a face-to-face -face visibility somewhere i think that boundary has actually broken you know, it doesn't exist at all. Like you were just wondering, is that going to make a difference? But it doesn't. I mean, you know, with the advent of all the meetups that are there, whether we are talking to you on Zoom right now, this is a meaningful discussion that's happening. Otherwise, we would be doing this on ground. But look, we are all still talking and all, everything is happening. I, I don't think anything has stopped. It's just that, you know, it's moved from one medium to, the, to another medium. And I think effectively all of us are doing this and taking that effort to do so. 
right. I mean, I also know of uh, consumer conversations that are happening over these meetups, you know, so even those touch points are not being missed out. So every stakeholder is being touched upon. Right. Uh, Mr. Bajaj, uh, do you think this acceptance of uh, this new medium is here uh, as in ha is mainstream now? Is it going to be here for for a longer time? Is it reversible as we open up? How do you see this rearrangement that we are witnessing? So I think I'll take on from where, you know, uh, uh, Sonia said, so from what Sonia said, naturally, right? And one, we were forced to, there was no, there was no other option. But the other thing was that the impact that it generated still, right, uh, helped, right? I mean, uh, I actually launched an OTT product on the day India was, uh, you know, on the day the lockdown started. Because we had a we had a planned press conference for that, day, but we continued, and there was no. Can my compliments to you on that OTT product? It's amazing. It's quite. It's okay. quite pretty cool. Wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Sonia. Sorry to interject. Yeah. I just thought you should. No, no, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. The other thing, you know, uh, real. I personally believe in life. There is nothing white, nothing black. It's all gray, mm -hmm. right? The situation demanded that we ride on the digital platform. And frankly, uh, you know, like Sonia pointed out, and Sonia coming from the GC background, there is that impetus on on ground, huge gatherings, you know, big big time launches, unlike our real life infotainment genre. But uh, you know, we took on to it naturally. Uh, I do believe will I mean on the question of will it stay forever? I don't know. There is no definitive answer here. Because the moment, I mean, hypothetically, assuming that there is a solution that you find for COVID and there is a vaccine that we have, six months down the line, how all of us will behave will be different. What it has done is it has accelerated the digital path and that acceleration will stay. But does it mean that it will have detrimental impact on say print or on ground events forever? It's a tough judgment to pass right now. So I will not go that line. You know, humans have the tendency of forgetting things fast. It's a big, big pandemic. It's going to last for a long time and its impact will also last for a long time. But post that, I think newer realities will emerge. Right. Uh, Ms. Pandey, your thoughts on this? I mean, adaptability, we have seen, you know, people have accepted uh, whatever was available and they have latched on to it. How do you see this uh, landscape, the new contours that are there? How are you seeing it? So let me uh, center this, um, Rohel, and you know what Sonia was saying, was the mayor. Uh, how do you transcend trust relationship onto a virtual world? The eye contact, the handshake, the hugs, or that, you know, the punch. And that trust uh, in human civilization has always been built through those basics, the body language, the non-verbal communication. Mm -hmm. How do we transcend that is, I think, a challenge, which is something that we as communicators have to deliberate about. Uh, have we seen adaption, agility, the human spirit come on board and engage? I, for example, had a virtual onboarding right. and to build relationship with my team, with my stakeholders and to drive work. You know, uh, it's been a great learning. Uh, for example, uh, how do you sort of, you know, have the digital first attitude because there is no other option. You have to have that. So there is a necessity. And if you're not going to be in that digital first uh, zone, it's not going to work for you as a communicator. Quick data points, Ruhail, and, you know, um, to the panelists, the fact that television ratings have soared during the pandemic. The fact that your regional, specific to India, your regional media consumption still you know, goes up. The fact that media consumption at large has increased. The question we have to ask, are we relevant to those conversations? Are we relevant to the changing landscape? Or do we need to reskill, skill up, up our game to be relevant to what's happening in the world? I think that is the the deliberation or, or shaping of conversation or behavior that we as communicators have to do. Right. 
Dr. Chibber, I mean, the fact is that, of course, I think uh, maybe digital needed a COVID. I mean, God knows. I mean, nobody, I mean, it, it's now become totally acceptable and, uh, you know, people can't forget it that, you know, you need digital first as a strategy, as a very important strategy from henceforth. It's unforgettable now. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, uh, the kind of mediums that have emerged, that have become more relevant? Uh, how, how, what are your views about them? Are, are they effective for the longer term? Will they stay? What would happen? So, um, uh, like what uh, Tohina was just uh, saying right now, uh, with, with, the, with, with the TV, with the other mediums really uh, not catching up. I mean, television was catching up, but then that uh, for a very different uh, uh, you know, audience altogether. But with other mediums, print wasn't even there at that time. I mean, we really were not getting those kind of leverages. The problem with a company like us, I mean, I, I come from a medical device company, a company like us, our clientele is not the last man. I mean, we produce coronary stents. Our clientele is not the last man. Our clientele is that doctor. Now, that doctor who is going to utilize our product and at that time, elective surgeries, at that time, you know, even planned surgeries, coronary, you know, heart uh, surgeries were completely put off. It was only the emergency ones which were there. For us, the mediums were pretty simple. It was either a direct call or it was a it was this uh, whole social media and WhatsApp mediums. Because ultimately, the marketing people, the sales people who are reaching out to these hospitals, who are reaching out to the doctors, were 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 those who did not have the legacy to really go out and do a branding or an advertisement or a or a, or a self, uh, you know, promotion kind of an activity. Press conferences, obviously, uh, as a medical device company, uh, under a particular act, we are not allowed to really display products and that to our category three product, which we are into at the highest level of category. So we had a we had a major challenge. The next challenge was these doctors were on duty. These doctors were immediately moved from their roles as cardiovascular specialists to a COVID duty where they were really running around in the hospital and not available practically. The only times which we had them available was pretty much late in the evening. And that is when we decided to come up with these smaller videos. Uh, WhatsApp played a major role. WhatsApp played an immensely major role because most of the doctors are pretty savvy on WhatsApp. If you look at a cardiovascular specialist who's got 25, 30 years under his belt, he is pretty much not on daily Zooms or he's not on, on, on these mediums unless he's, he's the chairman or he's someone who's pretty much into the boards in and out. But the other doctors were not into that medium. We had to really devise a strategy where we could be in touch. Out of sight, out of mind was something which we could not bear. Right. So we came up with these smaller videos which these doctors were actually having. These doctors also wanted... Uh, you know, some some kind of a uh, connect on a regular basis because um, ab absolutely, you know, it cannot be that they they live without uh, you know the whole marketing system itself. So mm. it was something which we came up with, we came up with uh, you know a virtual resource centers uh, a center for this particular uh, setup itself. The center actually had not only uh, uh, you know nuggets which they could pick up while they they're trying to do their duties. Uh, they had to literally also see a diabetic patient. They had to see someone who has different type of NCDs. So they had to consult. They had to look at resources and then put their brains together and then look at that. They wanted us to really send across all those things. We were practically chasing them, telling them what is required. And the medium was only you know, minuscule for us. We could not go out. That's where we created a forum where these doctors were actually a part of it. These smaller things were pretty much impactful. And then when it comes to larger business activities, it was obviously when we had to do a lot of other stuff going around so that the, so that the factory could be running up. We were producing that amount of stents. Practically, we had a lot of companies, I mean, the, the uh, overseas MNCs, which, were, which are giving stents here in India. Were, were not allowed to give stents. We had to step up our ante and, uh, you know, even uh, government agencies like Ayushman Bharat asked us that, can you please step up your production so that 
in case there is an emergency required and the cases surge to an to a level which is beyond control we have enough stents we have enough cardiovascular equipment because the first respiratory attack uh, go, the beyond respiratory attack the first thing was a cardio right right created those things right right so uh, i i'll come to this point again uh, before that i want to also understand i'll come to you ms huria i mean i this is not a typical order i follow but just just got you straight um so this 70 plus days is enough for a uh, habit formation that's what people say you know you get set in a certain habit so what have if i have to ask you what are the big takeaways for uh, communication leaders you know marketing leads and communication leaders uh, that they are going to implement hence or from these 70 days what would be those for you i think the fundamental uh, takeaway is that if uh, covid-19 the pandemic has really taught us something is the fact that if manage lock the technology enable solutions today uh, you know you're able the opportunities that it gives us is at a much lower a uh, cost that you're incurring you're at the same time getting extremely measurable results and similar impact so if there is something that i will take away is the fact that how it's managed to unlock the potential of digital and technology enabled solutions giving us a, a really cost effective method of actually measuring everything and also what has happened rohel is that it has increased our uh, listening capacity to another level you know we are dependent on social right now to listen to what the sentiment of the consumer is and you are able to take back to your teams and say hey can we you know uh, tweak this you know this is what the customer is saying so suddenly you know from being a b2b sort of a brand which spoke through your television mediums and to the trade you are talking directly to the customer customer has suddenly become at the center of at least this industry that i'm talking about you know so you are taking consumer feedback at the very minute at the very go and you are trying to see if you can adapt to that and change it you know so you are kind of actually acting much faster than what you were acting earlier so in in my view i think the technology enabled solutions that are there for example there is a piece that we've kind of adapted right now which is called online reputation management now the online reputation management basically allows you to listen to what the consumer wants hence so for um, you know it also helps you build fandom so there was a situation where we had where the viewer kept saying that they wanted a particular show called kaise hai yaar ya back on mtv now uh, it's a hugely popular show and uh, the team at mtv we took that whole feedback to the team at mtv and they said you know what our programming has sort of changed we are looking at uh, you know more scripted drama and not like you know uh, like reality shows and not like the scripted dramas so we said okay why don't we take this feedback to the wood team and the wood team said but the show already exists you know so if they were really fond of it they would be there would be a high uh, number of downloads for that particular show so we said why don't you actually you know put up that show in a more in a more prominent way so that discoverability was much easier and mind you rohel when they actually did that the uh, downloads went out of the roof for that particular show now the feedback was so encouraging for them in terms of what they saw they've actually commissioned a wood original only for kaise hai yaar ya so the strategy went from being tv to digital first and the tv team saw so much merit in the digital property that it's now reached on television so you know it's moving from uh, digital to tv now so that's that's what i was trying to tell you that you know the mediums that we have right now are extremely um, helpful and they are helping us take the next level decisions which we would have never imagined before right mr bajaj for you what would be those parts of um, those takeaways that would become you know that would become part of your long term strategy i think you know at a personal level my biggest takeaway is that you know we are an extremely agile tribe i mean 3 months ago 4 months ago had somebody told me that you can run a broadcast network with all employees sitting from home i would have laughed at it but we have done it and we are not alone everybody in the industry has done it so the basic learning is everybody could have done it earlier right they were it's our own our own beliefs our own prejudices or our own way of thinking i mean prejudice is not the right word 
so the biggest thing for me is question everything right there is no right way of doing things you can always evolve further that's the biggest takeaway the other takeaway for me i know there are three four things that i look at now that everything that we do at discovery i you know you try and bring in filters the first filter is is it empathetic second is is it purposeful third is it adding to the solution if you're ticking the boxes then it's great just good to go right like like just uh, sonia pointed out that digital you know the given that there is no on ground activity happening right uh, if the idea has purpose if the idea has heart in it it will engage right it's not the scale it's the purpose which is overriding right now and uh, that for me is a big takeaway for all the brands you know uh, that we can learn from and try and imbibe in our day to day work Sure. Yes. Uh, Miss oh, Miss Pandey, I'll come to you. Yes. Your thoughts. Hi, Trudeel. Uh, so two uh, elements I wanted to bring to core. One is, of course, your work and home has collapsed into one. So you're working from home and you're working for home. All of us have cooked many or more meals than we probably have done in cumulative years. So life skills have uh, been a huge learning. and it's not just at an individual level it's at a team level it's at a company level it's at a society level as well the other bit from a messaging point of view as communicators i think the gift wraps are off it's down to bones it's down to be authentic talk straight uh, be empathetic yes be transparent trust has never been more uh, let's say relevant in the way we communicate it's not about the good news or bad news it's not about managing the sentiments it's about being authentic and then people are willing to work with you through the challenge right. there is also this collectiveness of uh, purpose where people understand that we are in a uh, you know a tough territory and they can come together but if you are going to play around with your messaging and not have those filters as you know the other panelists talked about sami talked about sonia talked about you got to come down to the trust level and be authentic and right. have a shared value if it doesn't mean to don't push messaging at me because i'll be honest uh, i i don't know what the others think there's also a case for less is more sometimes you're communicating for the sake of communication and there is a void and everyone wants to communicate i think we also have to be the conscience keepers of saying that fatigue doesn't set in the over communication fatigue doesn't set in that's also equally important part of um, emotional well being of people that we communicate with uh, is is equally important right that sort of answers your question right uh, from your industry perspective of a chipper uh, what are the key takeaways what would you call uh, you know that will be implemented over a long period of time so i i basically uh, drive them into two it's tangible and intangible uh, which we learned around in these over 70 odd days uh, the tangible benefits obviously as a communications person we were really deep diving into everyone's area i mean i was sitting with a clinical trial expert within my office trying to understand how do we now decode a, a clinical trial i was sitting with a legal expert trying to understand okay what are the legalities if we are moving in trans transgressing into another territory altogether we were developing also ventilators for the drdo at that time because the medical device industry was trying to do that so how do we move from a particular product to another product which is not under uh, our regular uh, product portfolio so all that was there then the biggest thing was that the government was Uh, we're giving so many new uh, benefits to the industry the slew of uh, measures which the industry has got especially msme industries the medical uh, fraternity which has got decoding of that reading was something and learning was something which was a very big tangible benefit which we got out of this whole thing i would otherwise just simply would have asked someone Uh, in, at the regulatory team at our office and asking can you please draft something and send it across to me here i was the one who had to read it i was the one who had to read it 
and I was the one who had to drive. So that really changed. The intangible benefits were were pretty much. We had we we made uh, you know so so our 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 reach went beyond the regular journalists, went beyond the regular uh, you know clients. It went right up to the government level. It went right up to the regulatory people. It went right up to international business management also. So we were really trying to uh, understand them. They were trying to understand us and trying to position business. So business per se was something that we were trying to uh, drive. I was instrumental in driving something like a very major project uh, with the DRDO as I told you on the ventilators and we finally got into it. Uh, it's obviously something which was pretty good at that time when business is, when we don't have much business going on and you suddenly have this product which actually could give you business. So it, the tangible intangible benefits during that time were pretty much. Right. Um, so this is also a time of uh, uncertainty. You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, industry is going through distress, you know, across sectors and uh, communication, empathy, all of that, you know, um, measured communication, you know, emotionally, you know, uh, adaptable, you know, all of that has become a very big conversation points as well. Uh, I want to come to you, uh, Ms. Khuria. Um, I want to understand from you that uh, if you have to uh, share some a word of advice for all our viewers who are there, you know, uh, who are watching us as far as effective communication strategy, you know, devising that is concerned amid this uh, uncertain times, what would be that, you know, what are the factors, what are the key pointers to be taken into account? I think uh, one of the few things that we need to take in account is whether you're doing this for internal or external consumers is to make sure that if you can build a narrative that says that we are in it together, you know, when you're kind of developing uh, consumer sentiments or employee sentiments as we get into this unlock process. Uh, the idea is through the abilities of storytelling, we'll be able to maintain uh, that, you know, we have a humane side to us as an organization and that's extremely important. Uh, the other piece that I think is extremely critical is the, uh, if we can highlight the human interest stories, if we can highlight the business innovation of what the organization is doing to serve its community during this pandemic like you know did did we have a higher purpose like or you know my fellow panelists talked about um and the other piece is that uh, you know while we are in it whether we are unlocking or we are going to go down on, uh, under a further lockdown the idea is to make sure that we put out clear organizational sops at this time because you know you don't want any more fake news coming out you don't want any more grapevine coming out so if uh, you know, we can, as communicators, put this whole piece together that links, uh, you know, creating a human uh, image of your organization to make sure you're, uh, you know, interacting with them in a far more empathetic way, uh, you know, bringing about uh, humane stories, whether it's to your employees, whether it's to your consumers. And the third piece is if you can put together SOPs that sort of you know, helps curb the fake news or the grapevine that's sort of circulating because the last thing that you want is if there's anyways fear and anxiety amongst everyone. You, you don't want to be, you know, one of those organizations that kind of is helping or channelizing any of this. So to me, these would be the three things that I would really put out for all communicators right now. Uh, Mr. Bajaj, your thoughts? Uh, what would be the cornerstone of yes, this? Sonia's yes, covered it a lot actually. Yeah, just if you want to add to it, you know, what would be the, you know, the cornerstone of this strategy, which is uh, kind of, you know, uh, about uncertainty, about, you know, these tough times, we, uh, we don't know what is ahead. What would you like to say? I mean, it'll, see, from a communication perspective, it will change from brand to brand on where you stand. Like, for example, you know, what will stand real for me might not work for, say, yeah. Tohina or for Dr. Rajiv because of you know, different uh, businesses that we work in. But coming from uh, say discovery optics, the game is to ensure that we continue to tell critical stories which elevate cultural discourse, right? Because do the right thing in the spirit of time, right? And like I said earlier, being authentic, being purposeful, being empathetic in everything you do, right? And 
to Sonia's point, add that humane touch to it. Let me explain how, say for example, we, we did something in which worked for us was, on the World Environment Day, we were showcasing a documentary known as Wild Karnataka. Now, Wild Karnataka is probably India's mm -hmm. biggest documentary that has been made till date, made over four years, 44 minute documentary. And uh, it basically showcases the wildlife of Karnataka, which houses 25% of Indian wildlife. Mm -hmm. The big thing. And it, in English, it was done by Sir David Atanra. What we did was we got mainstream voices to do and narrate for us in their own language. So Rajkumar Rao did it in Hindi. We had Prakash Raj did it in Telugu and Tamil. Rishabh Shetty did it in Kannada. What that did for us was it created, it, you know, one, the purpose was beautiful. We were celebrating the beauty of India, the beauty of Indian wildlife. But this narration, the on-ground last mile innovation that we did helped us make the show that much more endearing and ensure that this message was passed on to millions across the country right. in a very, you know, interesting way. So the core word that we always look at when we look at discovery optics is engage, entertain, and inspire. And these three, I would say, ring far louder today, you know, given the environment. Right. So that's broadly how we are operating. Right Ms. Pandey, your thoughts on this? I was actually thinking about it and listening to all of you. Um, we talked about digital first, Rohail. If I have to add one more first, it will be human first. So digital first along with human first. We've all as communicators always worried about, it's about the audience. Uh, and we must worry about the audience more because it's sensitive times. People want to listen into what's relevant to them. So, or, Put the audience filter up uh, further, um, you know, right up there. And finally, as a communicator, I think skill up, uh, stay relevant, because um, there are lots of formats which have shut. There are lots of uh, groups which are not relevant anymore. So stay relevant, skill up, and uh, work with your team to shape up what that communications role is going to be uh, there on. And finally, Rohail. Uh, stay close to business because one of the things that I've noticed business is moving at a orbital shift level as communicators we need to sink in with that speed and gear up our uh, skill sets to respond to the needs of the business which is now the scope has widened as Rajiv was also saying that it's not just about the organization it's about the community society government and even nations at large right thank you Dr. Jibber, uh, what would you like to share with our viewers about the strategy, the effective strategy that could be built in these times? So, uh, Tuhina also uh, alluded to the same. I think the, 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 key, the key component was to really drive the business to what it, it could actually optimum uh, levels. So, you know, that's something which uh, everyone needs to be in grind whether you're in senior management, whether you're in middle management, and that would really drive it because uh, what happened, I would uh, just give you a small listing. We have around 1400 plus people, most of them in the marketing and uh, uh, you know, sales team. And it's practically not possible that I would have seen all of them. I would have met all of them throughout my career within this uh, uh, organization. But at that particular point of time, this, the requirement of everyone to really dovetail their thoughts and be available and see who was there at the last mile was also important. And that is where internal communication changed altogether, where we wanted even our guy right there in Kakinara or right there at, uh, you know, Dibrugar to be available to echo what we were trying to say. And that was paramount because what was going out in south needed to also go out in the west needed to also go out in the east and north. so you know internal communications changed drastically we did not have uh, real-time team leaders who were actually uh, conveying this we had them all virtually on our systems and right. telling them what was to be done so that was something which which was uh, a measure which I think was an internal communication activity which immediately started. The other thing is, uh, 
the connection with our clientele in our in our parlance it's the doctor at the end of the day we we'll at the doctor we 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 actually came out with a product called a covach which you know it felt like c o v a c h it's like a covach and it's like uh, some uh, a face shield we came up with a covach we distributed almost like over 2 and a half lakh covachs to these doctors these frontline healthcare warriors the gesture which came back I mean, it really bounced back so fast that now when we start our businesses again, uh, we do know that we've really got a comfort uh, when we are talking to them once more. So it's it's working, and as Samir said, uh, we're really uh, you know made up of a particular mitti which is uh, which which can be molded at 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 any particular point of time. Right. Um, we have uh, some. 12 minutes and some questions are there i want to start with the first one it is from uh, udit sagar patak of mud media mantra uh, i'll come to you mr bajaj uh, the question is uh, we don't know when uh, the recovery phase uh, you know would begin for covid 19 but what has happened is uh, how are you maneuvering through the new normal in the lives of behaviorally changed consumers there's a behavioral shift how are you trying to maneuver yes and uh, you know this is to the point that sonia earlier pointed out that one you are listening to the voice you know you are there on the social you are learning what's happening you're understanding what they want what they don't want mm -hmm. right and that helps also uh, we are trying to become screen agnostic so not just linear just not on digital there is also an ott so the way you like it the way you want it will present the case to you so with with the evolution of digital you know uh, domain these these chatter that you do you know gives you that uh, the feeler the traction and of course uh, the back end tools tell you where the consumer is headed mm -hmm. so you adjust your business strategy accordingly right in a very small thing you know for example on my animal planet instagram we did a very small uh, activity i mean just very small in which we got some wildlife photographers to speak about responsible photography and the kind of response we got was amazing it it amazed even me what i thought was you know very good to do activity you know sometimes you do the right things but the impact was amazing and again made us learn made made me think through how now we can actually look upon it as a long term strategy so there is no one single no one single solution there are multiple things that you do over time and make your learnings right uh, uh ms what are your thoughts on this the changed consumer i mean how do we address the changed consumer i think uh, i think engagement is key you know if we can find ways to engage the same consumer uh, you know in different ways like the way we are all talking about digital first strategy but uh, you know the core does not change the core of saying you know what whether it's an internal customer where i'm saying you know what i care for you and i'm giving that person a, a voice or for an external consumer saying uh, for example there, there is a amazon prime video which is out there saying you know we care for you we understand that you're locked up at home let me bring to you uh, movies because you can't go to the theater so they are bringing you movies right into your living room despite you going to the theater so everybody is sort of adapting to these things as we go along uh, you know thinking about consumer first and It, you know breaking this boundary of okay you know what covid or no covid customer for, customer for me is first and let me see how i can address that and bringing that strategy forward we are also in our own ways at bycom 18 you know doing that very successfully uh, you know uh, we've understood that mythologicals are right now bringing us some sort of solus to each uh, consumer you know because they have this sort of moral messaging imbibed in it and which is why you will see a, a lot of mahabharat a lot of om namah shivaya cu currently running on our channels now in order for a promotion of om namah shivaya we could not go on ground to promote a show like that we said on instagram 
on Monday morning live, we started chanting Om Namah Shivai with all our viewers and with all our customers. Mm -hmm. So there you go. You know, it's it's a perfect way to bring in a show and to talk about it on a Monday morning. It's the day of Lord Shiva. You start chanting Om Namah Shivai and you tune in into the show right there in the morning on Colors. So there cannot be... Yeah, no I wasn't aware of, of this. <laughs> Okay. Amazing, amazing talk. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So, you know, we are all uh, trying innovative ways to reach out to the consumer, but just keeping him and her at the center, whether it's external or internal, we're just at it, you know. So, I think everybody's trying uh, really hard on this. And I think a lot of innovation is actually coming out of these challenging times. And right. we, you know, initially we feel that will there be any innovation that can come through now? I cannot even engage with them. But there, there truly can be innovation, e even in these challenging times, is what I believe. Uh, Mr. Bhatia is here. He has some questions. Yes. Hey, Mr. Bhatia, you're back. Yeah, you're uh, mute. Sorry, you're mute. Yeah. You're mute. Yeah, I know. It's better to stay behind the scene. <laughs> so I have a question by uh, Sumanem, who is asking the panel, what is the biggest problem a communicator can solve in the virtual world? A biggest problem. So anyone, anyone, or you want me to direct yeah, anybody? Go ahead. So you can. Uh, I mean, if I, 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 it's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I, I know. So I'm kind of, you know, um, giving a stab at it. Uh, look, the problems. Uh, what are being solved? Food. Uh, whether are you being well fed? Are you uh, are you safe? Is your health right? Uh, is your work, uh, are you safe at work? The basic needs right now, if you can communicate to that challenge, for example, to my employee boss, it matters if I can put their safety first, how they are, we are engaging them, how are we helping them work better in a virtual world? How do we facilitate um, a work from home environment? How do we facilitate uh, well-being, social well-being and emotional well-being of that person. Everything which is real and needed is what your communication has to be directed towards. Whether it's the uh, being the go-between between the government and your employee force or how you're talking to your clients or your key stakeholders in things that they need. So what I'm really trying to say is that stick to the needs of your audience, of your stakeholders and that's what you need to communicate about. When you communicate, be straight and transparent and straightforward, be authentic as a lot of us have said, and take the feedback, learn from it. And frankly, there is no secret sauce. Learn along the way and you know, uh, adapt with agility and speed. That, that's what it is. I mean, content is the king. Your core messaging is still important. You still need to communicate. It's just the channel or the form which has changed. Now we are talking through these virtual screens. That's the reality, but we are talking nonetheless. Thank you. Sami. So I have one very important question, which is directed to you by Suman. And they're asking that, do you think while the Karnataka documentary showcase online will inspire us humans to care about the other species on the planet? I think it's pretty much in line on what happened there in uh, Kerala, especially with that yeah, elephant. Yeah. yeah. See what happened in Kerala was that, but I mean, before I get into details, uh, it's important that, you know, we contextualize Kerala. So uh, we, it's easy to blame the end farmer, but we need to understand the context and why, why is human and wildlife conflict increasing. And if we are able to solve that problem, this end mile issue will go away, right? Because if somebody, you know, it's that farmer is like you and me, right? We, everybody has a family. And if that farmer's produce or crop is going to get, you know, destroyed by say wild animals, he will try and defend. It's basic human instinct. Now we need to ensure at from a larger societal level that these issues don't happen. The wild does not get into a conflict with human beings or they don't enter into our area. But we also need to ensure that we don't enter into their area. So it's vice versa. The what 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 documentaries like Wild Karnataka do is they bring out the beauty of the wild for millions, right? In the pure joy, the way nature made it, the way God made it, right? 
and once you enjoy and you imbibe the likelihood of you being empathetic to the needs of wildlife will increase so my to my answer so my answer to suman is an emphatic yes we need documentaries like wild karnataka so as to ensure that an average indian understands at least his role because if we all do our role right broadly the society will do right we have 3 minutes 3 minutes we can yeah, so up. i'll just quickly ask sonia so there is a question by puneet she he is asking that there is lot of talk about new normal and every brand would have its own new normal what should be the best strategy to communicate about this especially for the services which invoice which involves a physical presence of consumer like hospitality aviation or cinema um so cinema is also adapting uh, i i don't know much about how hospitality and the other sectors are but i definitely know about how cinema is adapting and we are all talking about you know the drive in theaters becoming a reality so going from you know uh, the piece that we used to actually enjoy watching the movie under the stars they're all talking about pdr is going to be hopefully talking about bringing that experience live through a drive in theater so you will see uh, you know all of this come alive but within the new normal as we are all calling it out today even with the airline business you're seeing uh, the flights have started people are taking the required uh, precautions that are necessary you know vistara is doing a great job at it you know some of the things that i'm privy to so i think uh, you know we will like i earlier said that we will all in these challenging times find ways to innovate and adapt uh, to the situation that we are facing and we will come out of this phase i mean you know we we look back and say hey it was not so bad uh, suddenly we'll find that you know this phase much easier maybe you never know so so you were you you mute my last question is for rajiv so you know rajiv this has been in the biggest pandemic for the pharma and healthcare sector and there has been lot of shift of balance from the communication standpoint especially in that sector so what do you think how it will you know there'll be a complete shift in in the whole uh, dynamics of the communication in the pharma and healthcare sector from your experience since you worked in that field for very long time yeah so uh an absolute good question karan uh, see what happened is uh, immediately when this pandemic moved in uh, healthcare was the first thing which got criticized and uh, pharma and medical devices was something which were immediately i mean they, we were like labeled as pickpocketers in terms of uh, higher pricing of uh, medicines pricing of you know even ventilators and all that which was uh, skyrocketing at the end of the day uh it's companies like us who were uh, making money at this uh, crisis time also but i think uh, what we did is not only communicated well with the government to really showcase uh, the kind of apathy uh, the industry has especially from uh, from a big pharma perspective you know but also worked with uh, our clients uh, which is the hospitals doctors and ultimately the government to really show is the fact that yes when it comes to uh, a crisis situation uh, the the reality needs to be told as a blatant truth the reality came out uh, the domestic device industry which i uh, represent we did come up with the fact and figure that um, we have the way with all that is why there was a vocal for local chant by the prime minister himself we had the way with all to really go ahead and make the make in india a true reality it was just that the the vision wasn't there within the government itself policies changed almost like overnight we really moved and churned them overnight with the government obviously they had to be conducive enough because we have a lot of uh, the de device industry is almost like 75% plus uh, import driven so we had to also count that in but then the reality came out we today are such Uh, and if it, if i look at pp kits if i look at masks if i, if I look at other uh, you know sanitizers etc india is now self sufficient we are now importing it we are now sending it overseas and there is a demand our ventilators is something which are now uh, real real time uh, you know heroes i mean i would salute drdo i would salute all the medical device industries who really went at this time to address this kind of a issue where we were import dependent on apis china in 90% of apis was coming from china we are now not even uh, looking at that we are developing our own bulk manufacturing parks we already have 
medical device parks in india we are now utilizing it to the maximum and optimum levels so i think all of that changed and all of that changed because the narration the communication which drove that particular change was really being fenced well and i would really want to uh, commend the government of india for taking it to such an extent that today if i look at india we have a complete self reliant india in the next 5 years in almost like 70% of the pharma and medical device segments itself and we are not big pocket in it sir you we are you you are mute and uh... so thank you everyone for your time uh, thank you ahead, long uh, to you yes thank you everyone insightful discussion i think it needs uh, one more session definitely you know so much happening in the communication yes. space and we keep engaging for more taking the right side of the table now the communicators and thank you again for joining us thank you for your time once so, again thank you very much thank you, you everyone yes. thank care. you lovely connecting thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. bye bye